Okay, test test, 23, 23. We will check it out again here shortly. Let's see if this connects. Yes, yes, it looks like we're on. Okay, we're live. Welcome back to City Valley Fishing Field Team, COAF Field Team. We're back on YouTube. And this round, we've been having trouble trying to get this live stream working, but we're going to give it a shot again. I think we got the kinks worked out. And we're basically reposting yesterday's live stream that uh, crashed on us. So do check it out. Hi, I'm Glenn, City of Atlanta Fishing Field Team, COAF Field Team on YouTube. And this round, just more updates on our prets for next week. We hit the coast over there in Galveston. And luckily, I think we've missed a lot of the rain that, well, hit this week. And we heard that the Galveston Fishing Pier is doing some repairs. And that's kind of where we're going to be spending most of our time. But anyways, sounds like they'll be able to still be open for some fishing. So you'll surely be ready to rock. And we've been doing those preps in well unfortunately our two rods that we're supposed to be delivering today got delayed they'll be here tomorrow so we'll be able to get uh, another these two more 10 foot rods that we're ready to go for some pier fishing because there's a 10 foot limit on the, those rods but while we're waiting for that delivery always good to go brush up on the latest regulations specifically those fish that we may be catching over there on the coast so did take a look at things and let's go take a look at the possibility of catching a fish or two okay what i tend to do is, is i like posting the pictures and information that's posted on texas parks and wildlife and take some screenshots and then i'll put them in a cloud file so that i can i can grab them at any time and in this case Right here is the first one. It's a gaff top sail. This is one that we typically catch over there on the 61st Fishing Pier, as well as back at Galveston Fishing Pier, noting that there's no daily limit. So no limit for the daily uh, catch, but there is a minimum length of 14 inches. And I believe that's been in effect for a while now. So just kind of good to rehash and make sure that you're good to go with these things. This one is a cobia. Not caught one on the piers in the past, but we've heard other places so this is just one good to know that um well there's an opportunity to catch looks like two a day and a minimum length is 40 inches so it's been a while since i've actually been out there actually out in the gulf fishing for cobia um back then there was no limit and i believe the minimum length was a lot smaller than 40 inches i think it was more like 29 so it's been a while anyhow that's the cobia Your black drum they lead bag is five Minimum length as well as maximum length, 14 to 30 inches. So keep that in your back pocket. And then you got to know that no more than one black drum over 52 inches may be retained. So it looks like 14 to 30 inches, but you can, of those five that you catch in that given day, you can catch one over 52 inches and you get to keep that one. So good to know. And who knows, maybe uh, we will get a 52 inch or greater <laughs> black drum okay so red drum or red fish daily bag limit is three minimum length is 20 inches max length is 28 inches and then given a license year you can keep one red fish over the maximum length limit as long as you have a properly affixed red drum tag and in this case you can actually keep it and it won't count against your daily bag Additionally, you may be able to use that red drum tag as well as a bonus red drum tag. So if you catch one and you get another one uh, tag, you're able to go and use that again. So, hey, good to know. You can technically catch four in a day if one of them is at, um, well, if one of them is used with that red drum tag. Other than that, you got to stick with 20 inches to 28 inches. Flounder you can get five this time of year, except... Uh, let's see, November 1 through 30, it's only two fish, and they can only be taken by pole and line. And then come December 1 through 14, you can get two fish, and they can be taken by any legal means, including gigging. So, well, it's not December, and it's not November. So, we'll stick with a daily bag limit of five. So... But we got to keep in mind that minimum is going to be 15 inches. So that's good to keep in your back pocket. Kingfish. Let's look at this one. Daily bag limit 3, 27 inch minimum length, max length none. Okay. Well, that's pretty straightforward. 
Switching to Spanish mackerel, daily bag limit is 15, but they gotta be 14 inches, but there's no max limit. So that'd be pretty cool to be able to get some Spanish mackerel. Mullet, this one, um, it kind of threw me at first about mullet because I remember there was no bag limit, minimum length limit, as well as max length limit, but it looks like there is a max length limit of 12 inches, specifically when they're talking about October, November, December, and January. And in those cases, no limits apply during other months. So it looks like October, November, December, and January, you can't go over 12 inches. Uh, and then after that, you can, um, it doesn't matter at that point. All right, good to know. Let's see, spotted sea trout or speckled trout as like yours truly likes to call it. It's daily bag limit of 5, minimum length 15, max length 25, with no more than one spotted sea trout over stated maximum length may be retained per person per day, and it counts as the daily bag limit. So it looks like you can catch 5 in a day between 15 to 25, but of one of those five, it looks like you can keep one that's bigger than 25 inches. So well, that's good to know. But then, oh, by the way, there's some changes down below, which we're not in the Laguna Madre area. You're going to be in Galveston, so we don't have to worry about it too much. But south of the JFK Causeway near Corpus Christi to the Brownsville Ship Channel on the Bay Side and to the Rio Grande River on the Gulf side of the South Padre Island, the following limits apply. Looks like three still or actually it's three versus five and then the minimum and max length is their seven and 13 respectively seven and 13 inches and no spotted sea trout over 23 inches may be retained and i looked at um, the more information that they provided over here about limits at the laguna madre and it's basically based on that winter storm or that winter event that we had where there was some fish kill in the area and so it looks like it was uh one of the things that impacted was well that they limit as well as size for the spotted sea trout. Okay, looking at sharks. Yeah, this is one that's always fun to, to, to play around with, but there's only one per day, and there's a lot of special regulations that we'll get into. Typically looking at is the Atlantic shark nose, the black tip, and the bonnet head. But look at this. Non-offset, non-stainless steel circle hooks must be used when fishing for sharks in state waters. So, who? Uh, good thing that I checked this because I had some offset circle hooks, and so I pulled those. And here's the Atlantic Sharp Nose, 24 inches and no max length. This is the Black Tip, 24 inches, also no black or no um, max length. And the Bottom Head, 24 inches and no max length. And then, of course, you got the Hammerhead, be it smooth, great, or scalloped. Minimum length is 99 inches. Ooh, that's pretty. That's pretty big. I think it's like over seven feet. Let's see, seven times 12 is, well, no, seven times eight. Ooh, it's going to be pretty big. It's like eight foot plus. Yeah. Huh. Wow, that's pretty big. Maximum length, no limit. Okay, so good to know. Other allowable species, there's a whole list of them, uh, but basically it says 64 inches is the minimum length and no size limit but does list a whole bunch of prohibitive shark species as well and well in those cases you you can't keep any of them looking at sheep's head daily bag limit is five minimum length is 15 inches be it, and with no max length so it's been a while since um i've been fishing for sheep's head but good to know that Daily bag is 5 and 15, uh, the key, some key numbers to keep in mind. A lane snapper. This one is no limit on the daily bag size, but there is an 8-inch limit. Looking at red snapper, which don't anticipate getting any over there at um, on the piers, but good to know that, well, the daily bag limit is 4, minimum length 15 with no max limit. And then you got to take the red snapper using pull and line, and, but it is unlawful to use any kind of hook other than a circle hook when using natural bait. Wow. Okay, so circle hooks for red snapper. Vermean snapper, no limit for daily bag, as well as no limit for max length, but there's a 10 inch uh, minimum length. Snook. I hadn't caught one of these other than when I was in Florida, but if I do 
Uh, hook into one. Well, it's one per day. And it's a min max uh, 24 to 28 inches. So your little slot there that you got to go and deal with. Tarpon. Not caught one of these in the uh, Lone Star State. I've played around down in Puerto Rico. But here it's going to be a daily bag of one and a minimum length of 85 inches and a max length of none. So good to know. Triggerfish, well, it's been a while since I've caught triggerfish, mainly going out to the rigs, but ooh, daily bag limit 20, and minimum length is 16 inches. And then triple tail, I've only seen these while we were going out to the Gulf, um, have not really caught them, mainly by the buoys and whatnot when you're going out in the channel, and some of those kind of hang out by some of that sargassum weed or seaweed. But good to know, daily bag limit is 3, minimum 17 inches, and no max length. And then here's the shark limit identification. There's some details in there about some specifics about bag limit, gear requirement. Again, the non-offsets, non-stainless steel circle hook. You get the Atlantic, the sharp nose, the black tip, and the bonnet head are the key ones that most folks will be catching. There is a breakout between a... Let's see a black tip versus a spinner and it gives you some details there let me see if i can zoom in a little bit more so yeah let's see here we go right there so the black tip gives some details here let's see similar to spinner but first dorsal fin originates over pectoral fins and anal fin lacks black tip <laughs> so that's that's interesting so the anal fin right here on a black tip doesn't have a black tip versus a spinner does and then the pectoral fin starts right over here near the first dorsal fin. But the, let's see, in the case of a spinner, it's behind the pectoral fin. So dorsal fin to pectoral on a black tip, dorsal fin past the pectoral on a spinner. And in the case of the spinner, it has a doesn't does have a black tip versus the black tip does not. On the anal fin. All right, and then there's some more details. There's softfish prohibitions, and then here's these prohibited shark species. There's a whole list of them, and then even gives a few information as to some ones to pick out. One thing that we just keep in our back pocket is this in interdorsal ridge right here. If we see that on the shark. Typically, it's one of those prohibited ones. So right off the bat, we know not to um, not to even attempt to, uh, to keep it okay so let's see what else i got in here what other things i think that's it yeah okay all right so hey good to know that yours truly has been well ready to go to the coast kind of bone up on some of the regulations and oh by the way i can check some of these pictures and whatnot that i posted uh, i'll typically put it on my phone also just in case i'm out of a coverage but that said, stay tuned. Hopefully next week things will dry out and maybe they'll have that pier fixed where we can get to the tea head at Galveston Fishing Pier. And, well, stay tuned. We'll give you some updates. So it looks like the uh, we're able to get that live stream working. That was yesterday's post. So today, just this morning, just want to just recap again. Some of those things or lessons learned uh, for this round is a good thing that we were truly reviewed the regs because that non-offset circle hook, non-stainless steel may have bit us while we were going shark fishing for some of those those fishies over there at the Galveston Fishing Pier as well as the 61st Street Fishing Pier. Also did note that um, we've been following on Facebook some of the things happening over there in Galveston, specifically all the rain and whatnot. And it looks like a lot of that will be out of the way here in the upcoming week. But it looks like there's some repairs needed at the Galveston Fishing Pier, basically at the T head. And so we're kind of monitoring that. So far, it seems like things should be good to go by the time we get there. But till then, well, we still have some preps that we have to do before we head out there, mainly finishing up some of the rigging and whatnot that you know, really like prepping for when hitting the coast, as well as, well, we'll pick up some bait. I think we'll get a lot of bait before we head out there, just in case. Had some troubles before while we were out there, but. I think we may get some of those fish bites also as a backup. Anyhow, do stay tuned. And hopefully those two 10-foot rods come in today so I can get those prepped as well. All right, more to come. Do check back. Hopefully we'll be out on the coast here in the near future. All right, next time we'll catch you all there. Good luck. Good fishing.